back down the rabbit hole we go. <laughs> hey, appreciate you guys coming over, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much. Uh, we're back with Ron White, the Dr. Phil story. All right. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if he's going to be talking like him. Because, you know, doc, Dr. Phil, I think he can pull off that accent, too. Because... <laughs> <laughs> they both kind of kind of sound like just a just just a little bit a little bit uh but again hopefully everything goes smoothly with this video like i said before i have to make them smaller sometimes even after that they still don't get to stay up so we gonna see keep our fingers crossed all right again thank y'all so we ain't gonna waste no more time let's jump right into it Here's my Dr. Phil story. Oh, right into it. Every year, Doc and his family rent a uh, yacht for 12 days in the Mediterranean, and that's their vacation. And it's the only way he can get away, you know, because he is the most famous person in America. He's the most recognizable face, six foot four, bald dome head, porn must that you can <laughs> spot him from any fucking way. Yeah. And because he seems so approachable on television, and he really is approachable, and he's a sweetheart of a dude, but people are always, anytime he goes out in public, they're just, oh, what about, what about this? And that's fine at first, but eventually it will eat the skin off your fucking bones if you can't walk out of your house without somebody going, hey, my brother-in-law was all fucked up in the head, not where he just sat after this thing. Come yeah. back here! Yeah. Asshole! Yeah. That's, facts. that's exactly how it happens. I've seen it. And, uh, so that's what they do. Well, uh, last, uh, this summer, my wife and I were, uh, went on vacation to France and Monaco. And, uh, and I, I, you know, I need a break too. Sometimes I do 140 cities a year. I work, I do more dates than any other comic, uh, more cities than any other comic work of the day. Cause I just love fucking doing it. And, and 20 minutes from now, nobody's going to give a fuck about what I have to say. <laughs> so, like, yeah. While they do, I believe I'll do a lot of shows. Hey. That's that's a lot, man. Damn. So we're uh, we're in uh, France and Monaco and and uh, having a great time, man. We're just uh, I'm I'm really in love with my wife. She's so so, so talented. We have a fun life together, and and uh, we're we're there. And then one day the phone rings and it's Doc, and he goes, "Aren't you guys in Monaco?" And I said, "Yeah." He goes, "We're going to be in Monaco tomorrow. Why don't you come party on the yacht?" And I said. Fuck yeah. Dr. Phil, party. Which is what you say if somebody says, you want to come party on the yacht? You go, fuck yeah. <laughs> In fact, let's try it one time. You want to come party on the yacht? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I don't have a yacht. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, fuck, this is great, man. We're excited. We were down there. We were staying at the Fairmont Hotel overlooking the little yacht harbor in Monaco. Very cool place. And uh, we were down there looking at the yachts the day before, going, wouldn't it be cool if you knew somebody that had one of these things, you could just hop on it and fucking throw the fuck down. And, uh, hey, lo and behold. And it's everybody's yacht, man. This is yacht heaven. This is Steve Wynn's yacht, Prince Albert of Monaco's yacht. This is that Russian dude with the tiny giraffes. Well, they all share it? Anyway, they're coming in at 6.30 the next evening, so the next morning we wake up, or next afternoon we wake up and we go have this amazing lunch and we're drinking this fucking great wine from France, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be my guess if I, if I had to guess, and I did <laughs> have to guess. France. And uh, we were just having a great, great day, sex, and just a fucking... And then we go down to the fucking harbor that evening at 6.30. Sure enough, Doc's backing in a 165-foot yacht. Jeez. I'm not sure that's how they do it. But... 165. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, man? So the only way to get on the yacht is to walk on this gangplank to get on the yacht. And I'm walking on the gangplank going, nobody's stopping me. <laughs> and we get on the yacht and there's our friends from California halfway around the world. Are you fucking kidding me? How much fun are we having? I'm hugging everybody. There's a bunch of people on the yacht. We're hugging. Anytime I'm hugging you and I'm in, in, in a strange place, what I'm really doing is looking over your shoulder trying to find a bar. <laughs> That's why I'm turning you. 
<laughs> but where's the bar at? <laughs> and I see the bar, and right in the dead front center of the bar is a bottle of uh, famous black grouse, uh, which is a, a, a scotch I started drinking uh, when I was in uh, Scotland uh, for the Open Championship at Turnberry. And uh, you start looking at what the Scots drink, and that's what they drink, and I'm like, oh, fuck yes. Yeah, so and there they had a bottle of it on the fucking, it's kind of hard to find. Uh, and uh, the bartender poured me a big old glass of whiskey, way bigger than this one. And I'm like, I'm in such a great mood. It tasted better than I'd ever tasted any fucking scotch ever. I'm like, oh, God, oh good Lord. <laughs> that tastes like butter, honey, aged in Lindsay Lohan's pussy ear. <laughs> It tasted so good, I decided to skip dinner. <laughs> Just have a couple more of them. I'm mean, gonna scare me up another one of these. How about one more? All right. I ain't had a drink since lunch. I was fucking thirsty. She said thirsty. I was going at it, you know. And Doc noticed I was really drinking hard. And and uh, he goes, boy, you're really drinking tonight, Ron. I said, yeah, Doc, sometimes it just tastes like spring water. He goes, why don't you just drink spring water, Ron? Uh-oh. I don't know. I'm not a fucking doctor. <laughs> so this is going on for fucking hours. Now, now they really love Margo. They they're really, really love my wife, Margo. Margo sung on Dr. Phil's show a few times, and they go everywhere to see her. Oh. And Margo's a four and a half octave classically trained opera singer that sings rock and roll and jazz and whatever. She's been singing here for years. And uh, and Robin McGraw loves to goad my wife into singing. And my wife loves to be goaded into singing. So they I make a great little fucking team. I didn't know that. So we're on the back of this yacht, and, Mar and uh, Robin goes, come on, Margo, sing for us. And Margo gets up. There's people on the back partying on all these yachts, and the bars on the pier, people out there. And Margo gets up, and she sings. And they love jazz in France and Monaco. They have jazz clubs all over the place. And she gets up, and she sings a jazz standard at full voice, which I, I, I don't get to hear her sing at full voice. She sings around the house, but not at full voice. And when she sings at full voice, it makes me cry. Oh. Go, oh no! And, uh, <laughs> she finishes the first song in full voice, and people stand up on the back of all these yachts and start cheering. They go, "Yeah!" And I'm like, "Oh, how cool is this, man? They they really dig jazz. I forgot how much they dig jazz." She gets up, and sings another song, fucking screaming, and then people are gathering up around the back of the boat. And by song four, there's 400 people behind the boat listening to her sing. You could hear a pin drop just wow. like this drop and she's just killing it and I have a little secret uh oh I am fucking hammered man I am so <laughs> drunk I can't even believe it my fucking self how drunk I am I'm like Jesus Christ whoa. <laughs> and I would I would take I'd, I'd get a drink and I'd take one little sip out of it and I'd talk to somebody I look back and it's empty I'm like anybody else drinking out of this glass <laughs> <laughs> he's just chugging those things man miscalculations anyway she does say, I don't know seven or eight songs and she goes okay guys that's enough and she sits down and Doc goes well Ron you want to do something oh. <laughs> now I got to preface this with he's on vacation with his best friend and head lawyer and his wife Mary Pat and they're Baptists from Dallas and they're a little fucking straight <laughs> and they're about to find out my secret. Uh-oh. About 20 years ago, I was doing a bit that was so vile that I only did it for about a week, and I just quit doing it. I'm like, this is not the direction I want to take my crowd or my show. And, and I have no idea why I picked that night to dust her off and take her for a spin. She. Yachts are pulling up anchor on both sides of us as fast as they can pull them up. They're leaving the harbor so fast there's a surfable wake. There's a stampede of tiny giraffes diving off the pier, <laughs> swimming towards the ocean in certain depth. 
People were pulling her kids off the pier. I went, I don't think they heard me. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> Doc goes, that's enough out of you, Ron. Dang. And Margo's tapping me out. You ever been tapped out? She's like, that's it. Come on, baby. It's time to go. Yeah. She's seen it. Come on, honey. Let's just go back to the hotel. It's time for us to go. Come on, baby. Baby, let's just go back to the hotel. Come on, Ron. <laughs> and I speak fluent drunk. That means I don't know why you want to have a wonder why you want to leave. I'm having a perfectly good time. Fluent drunk. <laughs> Turns what? out there was a consensus. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll leave. Oh. Now the only way to get off the ship is to walk back off that gangplank, and at the <laughs> at the end of the gangplank, there's an 18-inch drop-off, uh, <sighs> and uh, my wife's in front of me, Margaret's in front of me, and I get to the end of the gangplank. Doc goes, "Big step, Ron." I said, "Thanks, Doc." Thinking I've made a big step towards something. Fuck, I don't know. He's a big psychologist, not me. <laughs> oh. It's amazing how much speed you could pick up in 18 inches. <laughs> it's nothing like falling over on the same level that you're already on. I slammed down to that fucking pier. I landed square on this elbow, dislocated this shoulder, put a four inch gash down the back of my arm, and I was so drunk, I just bounced off that pier. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, man. Shoulder rock. Fade to black. Uh. I wake up the next morning with the shoe buddies. All I can do is lay there in bed and go, shoe buddy. Shoe buddy. I can't move my shoulder. <laughs> Shoot, buddy. <laughs> my shirt stuck to my arm with blood oh. and giraffe hair and whatever the fuck else you find on a pier. <laughs> Shoot, buddy. <laughs> Dang. I have a wet Jolly Rancher in my armpit. <laughs> Wake up. Sour apple. <laughs> Had to cut it out with a pair of scissors. You almost can't eat them after that. <laughs> Dang. Shoot, buddy. He was drug drunk. drunk. I slowly open my aching fucking eyes. Oh. And there's Margo. Oh. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you got really drunk last night, Ron. What did I do? <laughs> what didn't you do? <laughs> well, you did the tits fucking Mamie Eisenhower story. <laughs> did Mary Pat laugh? Shit. Mary Pat left is what Mary Pat did. Shoot, buddy. <laughs> You think they're going to invite us back over to uh, the party on the yacht today? Who knew? Because I don't know what's going to happen now, Ron. I don't know. Walks out of the room, slams the door. And I just start berating myself. I'm like, you know, why do you do that, Ron? Why do you get so drunk it ruins things for other people? Why can't you just drink like a regular goddamn person? Is that too much to ask? You have a wonderful son and a beautiful wife, a great career. Why don't you make some changes in your life that'll make a difference in the long run? And about then the phone rang and it was Doc and he goes, you guys gonna come party on the yacht? And I said, fuck yeah! <laughs> hey.
there was a part in there. I don't know if it skipped. I don't, I don't know what happened. But, dude. I'm just trying to picture Dr. Phil partying. You know. I thought, I thought it was going to be. Like, when he said, why don't you just drink spring water? I thought he was going to. The story was going to be about, like, Dr. Phil like counseling him while he was there. Like he went to party and ended up being like a damn, uh, what do you call that? An intervention or something? I don't know. But they, man. Um, it's crazy. Like, I remember going to one of my friends. We had like a backyard party. And I just remember waking up in the back in a chair. Like at some point I took a chair to the farthest point of the backyard and just sat there. And that's how I woke up. <laughs> I'm like, damn, y'all didn't even bring me in the house or nothing. <laughs> but boy, like, I know, you know, when, because we have, I'm pretty sure most of us, I don't know if all, but most of us have been drunk before, but it's like your body, the numbness, man. Like when I would go places like going to the club or if I'm going anywhere where I know I'm going to be dancing, I'll drink because my knees are so bad that if I'm sober, I feel the pain when I want to dance. So drinking like numbs my body. And like how he was talking about like the, that 18 inch drop off, like he's not lying about the speed. Like it's like you walk different, everything. And I just know, like he said, when he hit that ground and bounced back up, like he probably didn't feel a thing. But what well, when you wake up the next day, oh, that's crazy though, man. I'm gonna have to look up his wife, like. <clears throat> What do you say, Margot Robbie? Cause like that that gotta be something, man. She gets on that, gets up there and sings, does eight songs and kills it. And then he just gets up there and just kills the whole mood. <laughs> but all right, man. Hey, again, thank y'all so much for the request. Hope you guys enjoyed. This brother is hilarious, man. He's a great storyteller. So thanks for watching. Peace out.